Hi, this is Kevin Purcell, and I want to show you Media Shout 6. This is a, a powerful worship presentation software package from a company called Media Complete. The purpose of it is to allow churches usually to demonstrate to, to display things like uh, lyrics for songs that they're singing in their worship service. Uh, you can insert Bible passages for a sermon or for scripture readings. Uh, you can just insert text. Maybe you've got a quotation that you want to share, um, those kinds of things. And, and basically it displays it. And I want to give you an overview of what it looks like and tell you a little bit about how well it works. First of all, let's just take a look at the screen. You start off, you've got this ribbon interface, a lot like Microsoft Office. Uh, here's the file menu. And then you click on the Home button where most of the work gets done. This is where you can insert different elements. Um, and I'll show you that in just a second. Other things allow you to control uh, the formatting of things like text. For example, if you select text down here, this area is called the inline editor. One of the great new features in Media Shout because you can edit right on the screen instead of in the old days you used to have to right click on your box and there was an edit button. You had to open it up over here. Uh, and, and a new window would pop up and you could do all the edits there. Now you don't need that. You just uh, click over here on one of these Q buttons. These Q buttons um, are then show all the pages in that Q down here. And the main thing, the currently displayed page is right here. And you select the different items and notice that the ribbon up here changes. Watch that while I select this image. And then we've got, we've got, we've got, got, and the background. And so you can change things like uh, you can make it a full scale or full stretch. You can have it a custom size. That way, if I wanted to, I could do something like that. We'll go back to uh, where it was, and that is at the full scale size. Also, you can change the effects. Opens up a little dialog box here, and with this you can change size sizes and things like that uh, you can flip the image vertically or horizontally if you want you can display it immediately or after a delay so this is kind of like timing uh, the transition you can have it fly rotate the end this is just like powerpoint you see the transitions in powerpoint and then the timing over here and then over here you've got things like opacity make it show a little bit less if you want to um, you know, put a text box over the top of a background slide and maybe you'd like a background just for that text box. You can bring down the opacity so you can still see a little bit of the background. Anyway, these are all in here. Just hit reset to go back to the defaults. And you can also find a different item by hitting the browse button uh, and that goes into your file dialog box. Let's close that out. Um, so you can see the basic things here. Now let's act like we're going to insert a lyric. We'll go down. First of all, let me explain over here the script window. Uh, your script is the file that you use. It's basically a list <coughs> of cues. One cue might be made up of multiple pages. For example, I click this one and now there's two pages. Click on that and there's three pages. So if I have that highlighted, and I hit insert right below this it's going to insert so let's insert a lyric and you notice it's got a library of songs so we'll pick this song and when you pick the song it shows here's the verse and here's the chorus you can control the organization of such things down here you'll see um, you know verse 1a and then chorus 1a 1b 1c that kind of thing and then blank and then up here you've got your templates. Templates have different backgrounds, different uh, text style, those kinds of things. And then you hit insert down here. Uh, or you can add a new verse, add a new bridge, whatever. Those are the way to do that. If you want to add new lyrics, uh, a whole new song to your library, you can do that from here. Um, and then let's just insert it. And notice it puts it, well, I thought it would do it at the very next slide but it didn't do that for some reason but now in here I can actually select this and I can edit this right here so for example what if I wanted to change that so that you know you've got fewer things on the line or maybe I want to show more on the screen at one time I can 
make this text box larger. Maybe I'd like to go to the background and change the background, go up here to a video file. Uh, I, don't, I don't have a whole lot of uh, videos on this computer that would be worthy of using in this way, so I won't do that right now, but uh, you can easily change that. So that's how you would add um, a lyric. If you want to insert a Bible passage, so you open it up and you select, say, Genesis 2, 1 through 10, and notice it has that, or I can just do one to one and use that one verse so you hit your start and your end give it the um, the right template there and then now again I can edit this for example what if I only really wanted to show the first half of this verse I could do something like that and then go down here and make it say Genesis 1a all right so that's entering Bible text. Inserting text queue, it's a little bit confusing. Notice you can either type or paste. So what I would do is, for example, let's say this is sermon point one, and then I have sermon point two, and sermon point three. Now what you would do is then, after you've typed in all of your text, select the text and add page and this adds a page over here. Now there's only one template set up on this computer but you can, you, maybe you have more templates and we can show you how to do that in a second. And so you can insert that. There you go. Maybe I'd like to uh, add more text. And so we open up again and now I want to uh, paste some text from somewhere else. So for example um, yeah, let's say for some reason I wanted to paste that. So paste it there, select it, add page. Notice it automatically paginates that into two different texts. So I insert it, and there you go. Now if I want, I can edit this, select some text. I can go up here and make it um, much bigger. I can make it italicized. I can give it kind of a, an outline look. I can change the effects of it. Um, for example, if I wanted to uh, give it an outline, and I could do that. And notice over here you get a preview of it. So that's the script view. That's the inline editor. This is the page area. Over here we have up here it's called the firebox and you can have a logo set up if you want to edit that cue you can change it so for example let's change the background of this image um, all right so let's say i wanted to make that the background of this so then i saved it and now this firebox notice that this viewer right here is showing the main program this is what the people in the audience would see and so if I fire that, or I can get rid of that. Now, if I was showing this thing here, this uh, a page of this lyric here, let's say I wanted to just clear the screen but keep that background. So I would hit the Inherit Background. So you notice over here, that's what you would see. If we did that and did the same thing, that's what would happen. Now, if I was playing a video file or a music file, hit Stop All and it gets rid of it and it also gets rid of what any text or image things that you have on there um, and so that's the firebox right there these are the two viewers you have the main viewer and this is the stage next viewer you can customize what you see here by going into settings okay and then by default the main viewers you see there's single that would just show one dual and quad all right so let's say we wanted to change that so that the main viewer shows the main program now this is one thing i sort of have a problem with you notice that these the arrangements of these four drop down boxes right here you'd think that this one would work for that that this one here would work for that that this one would work here and that one would work here nope doesn't work that way Notice, see, I've got main program, 
what if I want to make that a preview? See this top right box, a drop down box, controls the bottom left. That's counterintuitive. They really ought to arrange these so that they're, they match. It's a minor thing, but I prefer the dual. So we'll make that the main program and the main next. Now what's this stage stuff? You see these, you know, what's on the stage. What I can do is I can click on this button. It's called the edit stage button. And now on that page, I can start uh, entering text, right? Now it's all black. Yeah, that's the color button right there. So what we ought to see, there we go. So now what, what's going to happen is if I fire this cue, then on the main screen, I'm going to see the nice pretty look. And on the stage screen, now for some reason it's not showing up. Hit save. There we go. I guess you have to hit save for the stage screen to show up. Uh, this is what, if you had a, here, here, let me explain how this works. You have your main screen, that's what the audience sees. You have also the option to add another screen. So you can have three displays on your computer. This is the, com the display that my computer is showing me, it's my control screen. I'd have a second display showing um, maybe a projector or a large screen TV that all the audience can see. And then I might have another projector or TV that's pointed to the stage so that those that are singing in a praise band or the music leader can see this here, uh, this stage display. And you can put anything on here. For example, I could go in here now and say sing this chorus three times, okay hit save, fire it, alright, and now instead of actually showing the chorus it can tell me the instructions, you know, it just depends on how you want to use it, um, it doesn't matter. So you do that by hitting this button here, now, now we're in the edit stage mode, you go back to edit main mode and now it's going to edit this screen for you. All right, so we've shown you the home ribbon, we've shown you the viewers, uh, the firebox, the inline editor, the page area, the script area. Notice that these scripts, you can either arrange them with notes or with view. You can also change in settings to script compact mode. Notice you only have a listing there of the, the, the uh, cues. I don't like that. Um, so this is the settings display and notice I've only got one display connected to this computer right now so it only gives me the option for one display. If you had two you could show two. Now if I hit the enable overlay mode notice it clears the screen and it's showing me the uh, presentation on the screen. That way if I only had one, one display hooked up I could hit that enable overlay mode and I could still display stuff on this screen without seeing this control screen. Here's the general settings tab. Again, opens a more detailed settings tab. I'm not going to bother showing you that. Um, but you can see how it, you can change all this. Now, one of the things that's cool is you can actually control MediaShout using an iPad or an iPhone. You have to download a special app for it, and this turns that feature on or off. Let's go into the templates screen because this controls the templates and these are the main templates. You can save a stage template or manage your stage templates. So this area is for stage templates. This is for main screen templates and then over here is the place where you would actually control, um, you know, save, save the template as. I keep hitting my button here. You can make them default, that kind of thing. Uh, there's also an edit Twitter. You can actually display tweets uh, from a specific account. So if you go in there, if you can edit how Twitter would show. Go back to the main script. All right. So that gives you an idea of how to use MediaShout. Um, I really like the program. I think the interface is a lot easier to use uh, than it used to be. 
it takes some getting used to if you're uh, someone who's owned the previous version it's going to take you a while to get used to it I really recommend that you go and check out the um, the training videos over at mediashout.com notice that this has uh, a long collection of training videos just go through these one at a time if you actually sign in to your account it'll keep track of the ones that you've already watched uh, so that you don't you'll know which ones you've already done um, just yesterday I went through about half of these so they're fairly short uh, videos and it helped me a lot to understand how to use the program I'm still learning it and so I'm still not an expert but I'm pleased with it um, you can read the review that I wrote for Church Tech today and that will help you see a lot more of uh, how I feel about it. It's a pretty comprehensive review. But again, this has been Kevin Purcell showing you Media Shout 6. Thank you for watching.